Did you know that in ancient Egypt, there was no official marriage ceremony? So how did people marry? How did they find a mate? And what was family life like? Did adult ancient Egyptians live with their parents? Stay tuned because that's what we'll be talking about today. Welcome to the Dead Speak Online, where we demystify the words and lives of the ancient Egyptians through animated videos like this one. If you're new here, consider subscribing. It may be a surprise to learn that in ancient Egypt, marriage was not a matter of either government or religious regulation, but rather an arrangement between two individuals and their families. The reason for this lack of religious and state involvement appears to be because marriage was really largely used for property reasons rather than for moral reasons. Getting married is referred to in ancient Egyptian by the euphemisms many to more and gerig pair to found a house, supporting the idea that marriage was largely about having a shared dwelling, a shared place to live, and shared marital property. Also, marriage was not needed for moral reasons because in ancient Egypt it was not taboo to have relationships outside of marriage, so long as neither party was actually married to somebody else. Also, while divorce was certainly not an ideal situation for a couple, it was not uncommon in ancient Egypt, and it was certainly not considered a disgrace. And we have records of lots of men and women who actually remarried after getting divorced. While art often shows a couple with only two children, having many more children was likely quite common. And this is supported by documentation such as census records, legal documents, and even tomb paintings. The New Kingdom text called the Instruction of Ani actually advises a man to marry young and have many children, saying, quote, Happy the man whose people are many. He is saluted on account of his progeny. End quote. In addition, while married couples might live together in their own house with just their own children, it was also common to live with a lot of other family members, which might include parents, siblings, and aunts. For example, a 13th Dynasty census record from the site of Lahun features the family of a man named Hori. And initially, we have a record that shows Hori lived alone with just his wife, Shepset, and his son, Sneferu. But a later record for the same household shows an addition of six other women, including his mother and also his sisters and nieces. In ancient Egypt, children were expected to take care of their parents during their old age, which is probably part of why Hori had his mother move in with him. In exchange, children would inherit from both of their parents, both male and female children, unlike a lot of other cultures. And this inheritance might include such things as houses, farms, and everyday items like dishes. The child who did the most to take care of his parents, and who was responsible for their burial, usually received the largest share of inheritance, whether it was a son or a daughter. In some cases, though, it could even be another family member, such as a brother or even a friend or business associate. How important it was for ancient Egyptians to take care of their parents in old age is driven home in a New Kingdom legal document that was drawn up for a woman named Now Noct. In this document, Now Noct describes how out of her eight children, only some of them helped take care of her, and those who didn't help take care of her, she disinherited. However, the document also specifies that the children could still inherit from their father, even though now Noct had disinherited some of them. Thus, in addition to highlighting the importance of care for elderly parents, this document also shows how women could own property and even when married, retain the right to do as they pleased with their own property that they had brought into the marriage. In now Noct's case, she had inherited property from her first husband when he died. And this property remained solely under her control even when she married her second husband, who then fathered her eight children. While much about ancient Egyptians' daily life and social customs, such as marriage, are quite different from our modern Western ones today, there's also much about ancient Egyptian family life that may feel familiar, whether it's taking care of family members or arguing with them about money. 
If you're interested in seeing a whole video on any of the aspects of Egyptian family life that I touched on today, let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to take a look in the description for this video where I have a list of books that I recommend about ancient Egyptian families and also related topics such as women. Thanks for watching and see you next time.